I don't know about you, but when I look at the gameplay from Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League, it doesn't seem like a lot of suicide is going on. You don't really seem to be under threat, not a lot of desperation. I want to feel under pressure, I want to be in a tight corner. So I ask you, what do men really want to experience in today's society? If you are someone who plays Hearts of Iron 4 or Genshin Impact, you are probably going to say, taking up arms and defending your country against tyranny and socialism. And in this game, it truly gives you that experience. What this game does better than any other four-player co-op extraction shooter today is the level of immersion regarding the frontline systems. You see, each playable sector in the game has a frontline, and each frontline has a liberation meter, which will go up or down depending on how many players have worked during the day. If the players can win a series of operations on a planet without failing, the liberation meter will go up, a minuscule percentage at a time. Fortunately, you can see the amount of players currently on a planet, and the more players active on a front means faster liberation achieved on that specific sector. There is a reason why you see Terminate players having the time of their lives while a group of Helldivers in the Western Front are reliving the horrors of Vietnam. The gameplay in itself isn't anything revolutionary, and on the first look you may think, damn, this is Deep Rock Galactic without wars. However, the gameplay just feels smooth, the diving feels natural and heavy, and running and shooting animations are satisfying. The orbital and air bombardment gives you the feeling of calling down the entire American military industrial complex. There are so many variations, all having their own roles and advantages, but I can boil it down to do you want to either use a 500 kilogram nuclear rocket to kill your teammate? What the fuck? Or do you want to use a continuous orbital barrage to somehow still kill your teammates? The explosions are just pure dopamine. No matter the threat or numbers of an advancing enemy force, I will always use any excuse to spend that taxpayer money. My favorite is the continuous orbital bombardment. Purely because of how long it lasts and because the description says Communication is advised. Unfortunately, my teammates don't seem to understand when I soy scream, danger close. I don't think you're supposed to kill yourself with your own grenade there, Tiger. But it is not my fault they don't take my roleplay seriously. And if you ever make fun of my roleplay in this game, expect something sticky in the mail. There are two factions of enemies in the game. You have Terminates, which are basically the Turinates from that one tabletop game you cannot afford. These bugs basically use encirclement and rush tactics against you, and are purely melee based. They have some of the larger enemy variants, and really show off that cinematic experience you can get this game is so famous for. Then, there are the automatons. The so-called socialist automated murder robots, that does what every Helldiver player gets scared of. They shoot back. This is the faction that uses conventional warfare tactics, including infantry swarms with heavy armored units as support. If you watch Clone Wars, then the entire automaton frontline will give you the feeling of landing on Umbara. The most fun co-op gameplay I've had in ages was against these robots. No matter how many rocket launchers or orbital strikes you call down, there's still more of them coming from the trees. Now, having made all these points, my favorite aspect of the game is something completely else. Not the explosions or the shooting animations. Not even the subtle hints that our democracy maybe isn't as good as we think. Bots remind me of the cyborgs from the Great Galactic War. You know what happened to them, right? Hundred years of rehabilitation in the mines of Cyberstan. 
Maybe the bots want to join him. No, my favorite thing in the game is in fact the voice chat. I want to sincerely thank Arrowhead for making the push to talk not the default voice chat option in the game. And most players not acquainted with open mic settings. It gives me the opportunity to be the nosy rat I am. Hey, the lights in your car won't go off. Okay, turn the knob on the left to the off position. Like your outdoor light? Yeah, it, it's okay. Just turn it all the way to the left and lock it. They'll shut off. Your car is beeping everywhere. I've never had your truck do this. It's like... Sweetie, I don't know if the lights... Just come home. I don't know how to help you. Well, if you don't know how to... If the lights won't shut off, they won't shut off. I'll worry about when you get home. And then we have to bring the dog toys upstairs. Okay. Holy Moses. I love her to death, but by God. I love listening to personal lives. I love hearing my teammates backtalk their girlfriend's best friends while holding the line against a robot menace. The idea that another person or soul has an entire completely separate life from me, filled with cherished history, known friends and families, just gives me enough of that existential contemplation to save my rotting mapster brain just enough that I don't have to go to a therapist. Absolutely 10 out of 10 game, highly recommended. Now some will complain about the price, but- If you're a broke boy, just say so. Should you buy the game? If you have one or two friends willing to spend that money with you, most definitely. If you are solo, well, fortunately the community is very talkative in comms the moment you engage with them. Nice to meet you. I'm Hans, we're Hans. For the team, for the team. In my experience, you will get a fun little squad of randoms. That was fucking intense. I play solo since my friends don't have any money and are still grinding for that high rank in Valorant in hopes of getting settled down with an e-girl with disproportionate thighs. But since I am a man of business, I make do. And solo, of course. With that information, you decide. This game is one of those rare addictive co-op games that only get released once in a decade. And the developers have promised more live service content soon to come. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe as it really helps out my channel a lot. And as always, stay tuned.